Well, Jerry Kildangan is the most wonderful environment for a horse, and the first thing that really strikes me is how natural everything is. It is. It's a very beautiful farm, and I suppose, you know, it's been a stud farm for over 100 years. So we've got a lot of well-established pastures. Kildangan is, I suppose, the, the main farm in Ireland, but, but it's not alone. Tell us about the others. It would be, and Kildangan, you know, it is, is the largest farm we have here. Kildangan's worth 1,500 acres, but we have seven farms in Ireland, um, some of which are yearling farms and more private for Sheikh Mohammed's own horses. But, you know, given we have the stallions here and there is a commercial component to our stallion operation, um, this will get the most public traffic. Well, the stallion's already well into gear and very busy, but you've got some very exciting new stallions. And let's start with Dawn Approach. One of the things that struck me when Dawn Approach first came here was just how much class he had. He uh, came up from Jim Bulger, stepped off the van, went out into his paddock, you know, jogged around, had a look, you know, like he owned the place, like he'd been here every day of his life. And, and I think the good ones, you know, they just have that they have that bit of class and that bit of extra quality and he definitely has it. Give us an idea though from the point of view of the Book of Mares and the demand for Dawn Approach in his first season. Dawn Approach has been our most popular stallion here this year. We've had north of 300 applications um, and he's been very well received by breeders. You know, people come and look at him. You know, he's, he's a powerfully built but he's a taller, scopier horse, you know. He's been extremely well received. Breeders are, are absolutely loving him and falling over each other to get to him. So. It's a, it's a great predicament to be in in one way, but unfortunately the hard part of that is there's, there's a number of guys that unfortunately won't get to use them this year, but um, it's, uh, that's where we're at. I would imagine there's a fair bit of demand as well for Reckless Abandon, another new stallion yeah. formerly trained by Clive Cox, unbeaten at two and some unbelievably smart forms a two-year-old. Absolutely, and, and, and again he's your real sort of commercial type horse that, that people love. He's a Danzig Lion stallion you know, strong, powerfully built horse, real two-year-old, speedy looking horse. And again, he's been very, very well received. And then Epaulette, you know, we had a huge year last year with Helmet. Um, he's, he went over very well. His first foals are being born now and they've strengthened substance. Epaulette, being a three-quarter brother to Helmet, just made perfect sense to slot in here this year. But Epaulette, of course, was trained and a grade one winner in Australia. In Australia, that's correct, yeah. yeah. Um, but Epaulette came along in a vintage year. Um, he ran against Piero, who was the first horse in 30 years to win the Australian Triple Crown. He was rated 122 time form rating as a two-year-old and then obviously went on and was a dual grade one winner at three. So a very, very talented horse in his own right. As you can see, a great looking horse, you know, very well balanced, good mover, attractive head on him. And again, being very well received. And Tiafilo as well, if we're talking about the yearlings, the, the 2013 crop have been, again, received incredibly well. And he had a huge year last year yeah. with three Group 1 winners. Trading Leather um, being one of them. Exactly, yeah, and Veloz de Coors. And, uh, you know, he's just another one in Hong Kong. So he's, he's flying it right now. And again, another young stallion, um, a son of Galileo. So it's fantastic to have, have a source of that blood that we could go to and, um, you know, of that calibre. So. A very exciting horse. Kate Cross comes from a very different side of things. He's, you know, he's been on the go for, for a long time, but so he continues to enhance his reputation, really. Absolutely, and there, there's very few stallions out there that have ever sired the calibre of a horse as Sea the Stars or Ouija Board, but Cape Cross is one of those few stallions. So when he gets you a good one, he gets you any kind of horse. Um, he had a good year last year with his two-year-olds. You know, again, in the sales ring, he still has a yearling average close to 100,000. He's standing for 30. You know, you're, if you're breeding a race horse or if you're breeding a sales horse, you know, he'll, he'll get it done. And in that sort of 25 to 35 bracket, he's really, you know, he tops the charts in terms of sales numbers and race horses. So he's, uh, he's very much holding, holding his own and, and one of our flagship horses. Shamadal would be another to fall into that bracket and again his his progeny are, are speaking the results from the race course he's, I think he has 10 yeah. or over 10 group one winners. Absolutely and um, no he, he set a record no Irish horse has ever had as many pattern winners as he had um, uh, when he retired to stud and uh, you know himself and Tia Filo they're in what we call our 10% club where they're getting over 10% stakes winners to runners which are really unheard of numbers you know today so uh, you know, between Cape Cross, Shamardal and Tia Filo, they're all our, our sort of our top shelf guys. So they're very busy boys. Busy boys, yeah. So, uh, no, like I said, we started covering now um, and uh, we're up and running, so it's going to be a busy season, but it's, uh, you know, we've got a lot of exciting horses and I think for the first time we've never had the strength and number that we have in, in the European roster, both here and, you know, with new approach in Dubawi over in Dalham. So we have strength in numbers, so it's really a very exciting time here. 
Um, great that you know Sheikh Mohammed is getting the stallions of this caliber that he can use, and you know he's put an awful lot into the game more than anyone. And uh, it's a very exciting time, and a lot of optimism around the camp. And uh, looking forward to the year ahead.